looked into the shop and thought, how can I say no to lamington cake? So this is what I normally use for wildlife photography. Got my Canon R6, 800mm f11 lens. But then I thought, what if I take this lens, which was the first one I started with back when I first started photography, a 75 to 300mm kit lens from Canon. And I put that lens on my modern day $4,000 Canon R6 and take it to an amazing place like this to try and do some wildlife photography. Let's see what happens. And this might be a bit familiar to some of you. This is Lake Dolverton in Oatlands, where I came way back in my third video. Back here today because I'm kind of curious to see what it's like after about a month uh, with not as much rain as we'd had before then. So I'm going to be having a look to see how much has changed. One of the problems I do remember having back in the day, and as I said before, this was the first ever lens I had for an SLR camera, um, was that it didn't have inbuilt stabilisation. I remember being really jealous of all those other lenses that did have stabilisation. But now on the R6, the R6 has in-body stabilisation. So I will actually be able to get some stabilised effect using this lens. So down over there is where I went last time, up along that little causeway. It's not actually looking all that different. It's looking maybe a little bit drier, but not hugely so. Um, interested to see what birds we find because the wetland hasn't changed all that much. So there should still be those swans, there should still be those ducks, there should still be maybe those white-faced heron. <laughs> not sure what species of ants these are. They're, they look smaller, I think, than the Argentine ants, which we so often get in our houses down here. Just come across some noisy miners. This forest is pretty um, fragmented, I think it's safe to say. By which I mean there is a couple of trees next to this field and next to the wetland. So these guys love those edge habitats. They are actually native, but they can sort of take over. They are not pleased that I'm here. Fields one side, wetland the other, and a couple of trees along the edge. Classic location to find noisy miners, and they will chase out all the other birds. All those little woodland birds like the wrens and thornbills and grey fantails, all those sorts of species disappear when the noisy miners move in. Remember what I said about my face heron? Well, there they are. No, no they're not. Are they? Moments like this, I wish I had an 800 mil. <laughs> they are like face heron. Awesome. I also noticed that they're quite close to where they were last time. Last time I saw it down in there. Now yeah, they're just up on the hill behind it. And speaking of, there's one right down in there. Right where I saw it last time. And here we go, you have to be so careful in places like this. Turned around and saw this little guy slithering along. Really pretty though. One thing some of you might be wondering, is this guy dangerous? The answer is yes. All of Tasmania's snakes are venomous. Um, particularly the big two, the copperhead and the tiger snake. Both of those can kill. I am quite pleased to see this guy slithering away from me. So yeah, 
yeah, if you're ever out down here and you see one of these guys, keep your distance. If you can. And off he goes. Down towards the wetland, interestingly. So that's where I was standing. Snake came down along here. Only a few metres away is this gate, which I think I showed you before. This little guy standing there. And on it is a sign. Please avoid all long grass areas. This place has been mowed so you can see the snakes. If you're walking in that thick grass down there, you'd have a much harder time keeping your distance. A bit quiet here today, so I think I'm going to go somewhere else. Not sure where yet, but I'll see you when I get there. Back at the car to move on to the next spot now. I guess the one thing I've taken away from this is it's how nice it is to have a zoom lens. Being able to find the bird and then zoom in on it, rather than having to try and point the 800mm directly at the bird, is actually really nice and does allow you to get that bit of footage slightly earlier. When it comes to wildlife photography, I find there are sort of two ways that you can get good shots. Well, three perhaps. One, have good equipment, which today, I mean, I have reasonable equipment, I have a nice camera, but the lens is on the cheaper end. Another way, be patient. You can wait a long time and hopefully get something good. You can get some amazing shots doing that. But the third one is no good places to go. Today, I don't really have all that much time to wait, particularly not now as the sun's going to be going down, the clouds have come in. So I'm choosing to come somewhere that I know there's loads of wildlife, somewhere I've been many times before on this channel. I'm back at the Tamar Island wetlands. Let's see what I get. Little swamp hen was just having a wash in the pool. I think I got some photos of it too. It's really quite close, so with this 300mm is just about right. I'm standing here filming this thing at 300 mil, and I suddenly realised, oh yeah, I can zoom out, so I can get the whole thing in frame. <laughs> ah, so close to me though. something just spooked all of these because the ducks have taken off, the cormorants are making an absolute racket, and I had seen a white bellied sea eagle just around here before. Hmm. Tamar Island wetland, the place you come when your other side hasn't worked out. <laughs> and here's the problem with 300 mil, often not quite long enough. And we've got another snake. Look at this guy. Okay, I'm gonna try and get some photos of this one today. It's right next to the path. Snake has a little umbrella. Anyone seen Totoro? Just had my first occasion where the fact that this is an old lens really came into relevance. It's not as fast at focusing as modern lenses are. There was a bird in flight, wasn't sure what it was, tried to point my camera at it, but because it was a bird against the white sky, it takes quite a while for the lens to go through and back to find that animal like amidst the blur and then be able to focus on it. 
this just could not do that quickly enough. This lens is such a nostalgia trip. The noise it makes when it's focusing sounds like something is going terribly wrong. I hope it's not. Just listen to this thing trying to focus. So let's talk about why I chose this lens when I first started photography. Well, frankly, I was broke. And this lens, even then, I think I started in around 2011, was old and cheap. I think I paid around $250 for it back then. Maybe less. You know, that's how much I paid for the camera I got. But what I really want to get at with this video is if this is all you've got, you can still get amazing shots. You just have to be in the right place and maybe be patient. There's that swamp area again. That is right in the direction I'm going. I'm going to keep fingers crossed. The nice lapwing are not at all pleased about its presence. What a nostalgia trip of a day this has been. Getting to play around with my old lens again. Uh, this wasn't the one I actually had way back in the day. I had to buy it again. <laughs> I do still have the camera I started out way back in the day with though, the body. So I'm looking forward to cracking that out sometime. But for now, this has been a really good day. Thank you so much for watching and I might see you next time. Now before I end this video, I do just want to have a bit of a chat about this lens and about how photography gear equipment has changed over the past two and a half decades. Let's talk about this 300mm. So, I like this shot. This is one that was taken with the 300mm, the 75-300 to kit lens that's 24 years old. And it's quite sharp. It's focused in the right spot as far as I'm concerned. But look up here. Look up here. This purple. This is where the light coming through the lens has been distorted in such a way that it appears purple. This is a problem, and this is something that modern lenses have got much better at. And then let's look at this image. Again, it's nice. Look at the detail in those feathers. But if we look up at the eye, I'm not sure if that the camera has missed focus, but moving over to these photos, which were taken with the 800mm lens, I just think, like, you can tell how much technology has changed in these last two and a half decades. Look at how sharp that eye is. Can see hardly any of that chromatic aberration, that um, purple coloration. And of course, it's not fair to compare these two lenses. One is a kit lens that, when it was released, was nowhere near the cost of the ultra telephoto lens, my 800mm. But the point of this video is not to compare those two lenses. The point of this video is that you can capture amazing photos with whatever equipment you happen to have. Thank you so much for watching.